Welcome to Forming Faithful Families. I'm Jim Littleton. And I'm Kathleen Littleton. The theme of our program today, the power and the blessing of a parent. God has given human persons the ultimate blessing in parenthood. For me, for example, the power and the blessing of a parent is, is very important. Um, I think that the power of a blessing of a parent is very strong. Oh, that's one of the most special things that a parent can do for their child is to bless them, to teach them how that they can always receive the blessing from you. Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, own us, possess us, teach us, move us, heal us. In Jesus' name, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us, Romans 5.5. 5. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My wife Kathleen and I have been married for 33 years, and we are the parents of 19 children, 14 living on earth, and five in heaven. So because we have so many children, it may seem we have lots of power since we have lots of kids. Well, there is power in parenthood, and I don't mean the power physically over a smaller person, your child, there is a real power, a supernatural grace given to parents by virtue of their sacramental marriage. It is a power given by God for the good of the children, a consecration by God to fulfill the parental duties within the family. It is a power to lead each other as spouses and the children to holiness. A power, yes, a privilege and a grave responsibility. The Church Fathers reveal to us the source of this power in Gaudium et Spes number 48, quote, Christian partners are therefore strengthened and as it were consecrated by a special sacrament for the duties and the dignity of their state. By the power of this sacrament, they fulfill their obligations to each other and to their family and are filled with the Spirit of Christ. Hence, with parents leading the way by example and family prayer, their children, indeed all within the family circle, will find it easier to make progress in natural virtues, in salvation, and in holiness." End quote. Parents have the power to give their children gifts that will make them holy and happy here on earth and for all eternity. So what are the five greatest gifts that parents have the power to give their children? Well, surely as parents, we are called to do our best in providing for our children, including housing, food, clothing, and education. But these we maintain do not make it to the top five greatest gifts. How about making star athletes out of our children and having them over-engaged in outside activities at the cost of our family, always being hurried, busy, rushed, and exhausted? Having little downtime to enjoy family unity and peace. Are these among the supreme gifts? No. We assert that the first of the greatest gifts we have the power as parents to give to our children is to pass on the gift of faith in God, leading by example, and in the unswerving practice of our Catholic faith, this will bear untold fruit in the life of our family. It is through parenthood that we are able to be co-creators with God in this world, to bring life into this world, and then to nurture those uh, young people to become wonderful adults in this world who reflect the light of Jesus Christ. In my life, my parents have been both great mentors and great spiritual guides in my life. Not only is in my guide into the seminary, but even my guide now and before the seminary, they've always taught me the importance of prayer, the importance of putting God at the center of my life, and most of all, seeing God in each of my brothers and sisters that I encounter along the way in life. The second greatest gift we have the power to give to our children is, are you ready? A secure, enduring, happy marriage between the father and the mother. Children find a great sense of security in this gift. And thanks to this gift, they will flourish more in virtually every aspect of their lives. This calls for commitment, effort, and sacrificial agape love on the part of the parents. We can do it with God's help 
with the graces constantly being poured out upon us through the sacrament of marriage. Try to guess the third greatest gift we as parents have the power to give, which is something children ask for often. When this gift is received, the entire family is incredibly joyful and transformed. On the special occasion of the arrival of this magnificent gift, the family will never be the same. This gift calls for faith, courage, and generosity on the part of the givers. The third gift lasts for many decades, only getting better, changing, and developing each day. This magnificent gift is unique and can never be repeated, but a similar gift can be added approximately every year. It can be given by three persons agreeing and acting only. Have you guessed it yet? Yes, this profound gift is that of another child. And those three persons agreeing are husband, wife, and Almighty God. The fourth greatest gift we as parents have the power to give our children is quite simple yet challenging. At the same time, it is tremendously efficacious. The fourth gift is that of the parents to the best of their ability and at the cost of sacrificing many things, being present. Yes, being present to and loving their children. No amount of money, gifts, sports, or activities will ever be able to substitute for our loving presence with our children. We are called to be present to our children and to give them our full attention. Let's put down our screens, our cell phones, and other distractions in our lives so as to give our complete love and attention to our child. Our children have no other parents but us. We are it. They deserve and desperately need our irreplaceable presence, love, and attention. But I really feel it's, it's important when you're raising your child to say their night prayers with them, to bless them as they leave the house, to put your hand on their forehead, maybe make the sign of the cross on their forehead. If you have the approval and the blessing of your parent, you always feel more motivated. You always feel more secure in the decisions that you're making. Because as a parent, you always have that influence over that person. You're always thinking, or the child, like myself with my parents, I'm always thinking, oh, maybe my parents approve, so therefore I'm doing something good. The fifth greatest gift, a parent has the power to give their child a blessing. This seems like a small and simple gesture, but what power there is in the blessing of a parent. A good parent blesses his children often. May I share a brief story? I was once tucking my child, Shayla, age eight, into bed. She was wrapped up like a cocoon in her blanket, as comfortable as could be. I sat on her bed and bent over to bless her with holy water and hug her. I was somehow moved to whisper in her ear, you're safe, you're safe. She responded with such a peaceful, heavenly, comfortable look. And she said, I am safe with you, daddy. Is this not how our loving Father in heaven acts with us, how he acts with you? Well, I want to tell you with complete assurance, God, your Father, is embracing you at this very moment. Your Father in heaven is longing for you to hear his words for you and only you, as if you are the only person he ever created. He is whispering to you individually. You are safe. You're safe. And our response should be, yes, dear daddy, I'm always safe with you as we experience his profound peace. And as long as we don't push God away, he will see to every good in our life and see us safely to heaven where we will behold his face and experience his divine embrace for all eternity. Oh, what magnificent power our tender Father in heaven has gifted parents with to bless their children. Just think what healing and heavenly power emanates from the love, blessing, and touch of a parent. May we bless our children often, telling them perhaps in these beautiful words of scripture, Fear not, beloved, you are safe. 
take courage and be strong. And yes, your daddy in heaven is blessing you right now, dear listener. Only be still for a moment and you will recognize the love being poured out upon you at this very moment. Then we can say too, I am safe with you, daddy. Let us give our children what we have in our power to give them, the gifts that really matter. Let's try exercising our God-given power as parents and lavishing these sublime gifts upon our children. We don't need to go shopping for these gifts. They cost nothing, yet they cost everything. That is total self-giving agape love. And when we give these gifts to our children, we receive an infinite return of love from them as well as from our blessed Lord Jesus, namely, love himself. He who has the power to give infinite gifts of life and love. I often see families uh, coming into Mass before Mass, before they go to school. We have a Catholic school here. Before they go to school, and they always bless the child before they go in. They come before the Blessed Sacrament. They'll say a short prayer and this starts the child's day. They know they start the day with Jesus. They end the day saying their prayers at night to Jesus, to Mary, and Joseph. As a parent, bless them before they go to bed. Bless them when they leave the house and always tell them that how much they love them and how much God loves them. So if a parent is always blessing you during your day or blessing you uh, before you start your day, it's something that's very beautiful because it starts off the day on a, on a good note, on a note with Jesus Christ because you're blessing them not only as a, you know, you're blessing them in the name of the Father, their son and the Holy Spirit, giving him that strength and that virtue, being able to remember that he has to think about Jesus in every action that he does during the day. Media is powerful. It can change a culture. It can change a whole generation. It can impact the entire globe. Two years ago, Shalom World TV was a dream. Today, it's a reality. A commercial-free, high-definition television network broadcasting from the United States of America, reaching 375 million English-speaking people around the globe. We want to reach to the ends of the earth. Throughout the year, Shalom missionaries work day and night to accomplish this mission, to produce programs that evangelize the culture. What is wrong with others tonight on Seekers? I can make time for you. For divine knowledge. We want to continue this mission. We want to produce more programs to impact this generation positively. Will you be with us? Can you take a commitment of donating just $25 a month for the next 12 months? We assure you of our prayers. Visit shalomworld.org slash donate today. We thank you for your generosity. We have a great lineup of guests in store for you today. We'd like to introduce Christine Watkins, who is a wife and mother of two boys. She is a Catholic speaker and author of the book, Full of Grace, Miraculous Stories of Healing and Conversion Through Mercy and Intercession. Thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, my husband, to whom I've been married 15 years, he works as the Director of Catholic Charities and Social Services here in Sacramento. I have a seven-year-old boy who's adopted and an 11-year-old boy. They're the cutest boys alive, except for all of your children, of course. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. And we also have another Paul, guest. Paula Gottemuller. Paul, Hi. Paula. Hi. Hello. Uh, They've been married for 36 years. They have two biological sons, ages 33 and 30, an adopted daughter from China, uh, age 22. And six years ago, they adopted a sibling group of three children from Ethiopia, twins uh, ages 12 and a nine-year-old. So uh, Paula, uh, Paula and Paula, tell us a little bit about your family uh, to start out. Okay, well, uh, we have the six children, and the, like you said, their ages range from 9 to 33. And um, we like being uh, 
a family of um, different cultures, I should say. It was through a mission trip in Tanzania, Africa, that uh, that sort of led us to the adoption. Right. And we just kept it open and kept praying the whole time, God, uh, what do you want us to do with this uh, opportunity that we had in Africa? And we thought it was to help the orphans there. And that was part of it. And But God led us further into the adoption of Mark, Catherine, and Maria. Paul, how old were you at the time of the adoption? 58. 58, and I was 53, and, right. and my blessed mother is, is um, I just have to share this real quick, on July 16th with my entry that uh, our sponsor child would make a difference, we thought God was going to be calling us to the schools to teach uh, people about the needs of a third world country, um, not about adopting again, and then when he laid that on our heart, um, I, uh, he, uh, the Blessed Mother really made it known because it was exactly one year later we were at a retreat in Connecticut and the phone rang um, and they said, we have three orphans for you, would you take them? And we said, yes, we would. And that day was July 16th, one year later, after I made that promise to Delphinus that right his life would make a difference someday. And I felt like that was, we did feel like that was confirmation from the Blessed Mother. And so many miracles um, happened after that, after we said our right. yes. Thank you. And, and to be honest with you, I was thinking about retirement and all that, but I couldn't find in the Bible where it talked about people being <laughs> eligible to retire. So sure. I thought, well, sure. you know, I That's think we're wonderful. supposed to work on helping people the rest of our lives and, uh, you know, do God's will the most, you know, through until the day we can. And then we also have a third guest with us today, Mark McElarth, who is the president of Catholics at Work and the co-founder of Made for More Catholic Men's Conference. Welcome, Mark, and tell us a little bit about your family. Well, great. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, Mark McElrath from Orange County, California. My wife, Drusilla, and I have been married for 33 years. We have two daughters that are now adults, grown about the house. Mercedes is 28, Marissa is 26. Mercedes is married five years to Michael. She's a mother of two. Uh, Rory is age three and Colton is age one. Mark, I'd like to ask you uh, to weigh in on the power of the gift of passing on the faith within the family and also how a strong, enduring marriage impacts the family, impacts the children. Can you comment on that, Mark? Absolutely, and that's a great point. Um, I wanna just affirm what I heard in these stories. I heard that there was a Catholic convert. I heard that there were people open to adopting at a later in age. Uh, I'm the youngest of nine children. My mom uh, had me when she was 39 years old. So I was uh, raised in a, in a very big, boisterous, loving family. And uh, my mom was a convert to the faith. My dad um, never came into the Catholic Church. So in terms of our faith formation, the spiritual head of our family, in many regards, it was my mother. And because of her conversion to Catholicism, she was uh, baptized, confirmed, had her first communion, had her marriage blessed, had her first four children baptized all on the same day. And she had a fervor for her entire life as mothering us in the faith. It was a time period here in California where it was tremendous uh, growth in population. So things like Catholic education were not easy to come by. You had to work very hard to get your children into the schools so, because they were just so impacted. And if you can imagine having six, seven, eight, nine children wanting Catholic education for them, she became a volunteer and became very engaged uh, in the management of our parish and later the deanery and then later uh, heading up right to life in Southern California in the late 1960s. So that example, that witness of my mom, who was not only a uh, you know, loving mother running a household, uh, professional volunteer, registered nurse, um, she was a very actively engaged woman who integrated her life of faith. That was my example growing up. It was very natural to me. Great. Amen. We'd like to also talk to Christina, who also has adopted. And one of those gifts that we spoke of was siblings as another gift we can give our children. Would you like to share your story about your adoption? Sure. I'm a convert and I was supposed to have died from my sins. And I'm only alive because of Mary asking her son to save me. And so my story is in that book, the Full of Grace book. And so Mary has always been uh, so close to my heart. And I had a boy, he was five at the time, my 11 year old. And as a five year old, and I had had three miscarriages, I thought, well, I might not be producing a sibling. 
but is God calling me to adopt? And I thought he might be. Well, if, if any of you would like to jump in and share your experience with the power of actually blessing your children. However you may bless your children. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, the blessings that we try to give our children, we try to do the family rosary every night and also the divine mercy. And we sit around and, um, you know, hear the prayers of our children and uh, kids have a real way of humbling you. And I think it's our way to sainthood, hopefully, because, uh, um, you know, we learn so much from them. And uh, we always think that we're the teachers, but they're really the teachers back to us and uh, the blessings that they have given us. But um, so uh, with a lot of prayer and um, in our daily mass and uh, taking advantage of the sacraments, I think those are the blessings that we help give our children. Christine? I, at night, I pray over my kids and we have others, many other things we do, all the sacraments and, um, one of the greatest blessings that I've seen in my 11-year-old is going to confession. And I'd love to bring my seven-year-old to Eli's all the time. <laughs> um, but I bring my 11-year-old and we all go. And I remember just the other day he was saying, I hate my brother. I am so sick of him. He's so annoying. He's so hyper. My little guy has ADHD. You know, the guy's on the move. And he, then he walks into the confessional. He comes out and he sits next to me. We're getting ready for mass. He says, Mom, I love my brother. Oh, mm. He's so funny. And, and all the good qualities of his brother were flooding into his soul. And I, and I just love how in the sacrament of confession, Jesus takes part. He takes our sinfulness away from us and gives us part of his divine nature. And Mark, we only have 30 seconds left. So any last uh, word of wisdom? For our Absolutely. I think the most practical way that we as a family can enjoy the blessings of God is when we say grace before our meals. When we make the sign of the cross and we invoke God's blessing upon ourselves, our meals, those who prepared it, just that simple act inside the home and also when we're out in public in restaurants, affirming our faith through public witness. Mm -hmm. So the invoking of the Father's blessing humbles me, shows a good example before my children that I need God's blessing and that I in turn share my blessing with them. Mm -hmm. These are important examples and, and just very simple ways that we can live our faith every day. Thank you. Well, we want to share um, our gratitude to all three of you in um, coming on today and sh sharing your stories of the power of your parenthood and the positive effects it has on, on our children. Thank you again. Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. I love it. In closing, I'd like to share another time when my daughter Shayla was just age four. She came up to me spontaneously and she said, God loves you very much because you bless your children every night. Wow, it is a beautiful practice to bless one's children at bedtime with holy water, making the sign of the cross on each of their foreheads, perhaps saying simply but powerfully, God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I have to tell you, I'm not always the ideal father, but I most certainly can make the little effort to bless my children and my wife each night. Though a small effort, its effects are unbounded, powerful. And I assure you, your heavenly father of mercies is madly in love with you. And he is constantly pouring his blessings forth upon you, upon your loved ones. Never doubt it believe you are God's most beloved child. He is with you. He will never leave you. He is going to make everything turn out okay. God love you.